Hey guys, here we are back again for another chapter or two of Wonder. Now, when we left off yesterday, Augie had made a new friend, Summer. They seem to be getting along great. She doesn't seem to mind that he eats funny or anything else, or that he even looks funny. She's just happy to have him. And then there was the issue with Augie being mad at his mom, and we can't figure out what's he so upset about. You all have any idea yet what it is that he's so mad at his mother about? Sometimes you kids just get mad at us. We know. Now, so today we're going to pick up on chapter called Padawan, and it's on page 57. It starts off with, that night I cut off the little braid on the back of my head. Dad noticed first. Oh, good, he said. I never liked that thing. Via couldn't believe I had cut it off. That took you years to grow, she said, almost like she was angry. Why did you cut it off? I don't know, I answered. Did someone make fun of it? No. Did you tell Christopher you were cutting it off? We're not even friends anymore. That's not true, she said. I can't believe you would just cut it off like that, she added snottily and then practically slammed my bedroom door shut as she left the room. I was snuggling with Daisy on my bed when Dad came to tuck me in later. He scooched Daisy over gently and lay down next to me on the blanket. So, Augie Doggie, he said, it was really an okay day. He got that from an old cartoon about a Dachshund named Augie Doggie, by the way. That's a pretty old cartoon that was back in Miss Boyd's day, you know, because y'all think I'm old as the hills. So, if you want to check that out, Augie Doggie. He had bought it for me on eBay when I was about four, and we watched it a lot for a while, especially in the hospital. He would call me Augie Doggie, and I would call him Dear Old Dad, like the puppy called the Dachshund Dad on the show. Yeah, it was totally okay, I said, nodding. But you've been so quiet all night long. I guess I'm tired. It was a long day, huh? I nodded. But it really was okay? Dad doesn't seem so sure that Augie's telling the truth right now. I nodded again, and he didn't say anything, so after a few seconds, I said, It was better than okay, actually. Well, that's great to hear, Augie, he said quietly, kissing my forehead. So it looks like it was a good call Mom made, you going to school. Yeah, but I could stop going if I wanted to, right? Now, I know some other kids that would like to have that opportunity. You all, if I asked you all that, you'd say, yes, we want to stop going. But you know what? I think you'd miss us. Because we sure do miss you all. That was the deal, yes, he answered, though I guess it would depend on why you wanted to stop going, too. You know, you'd have to let us know. You'd have to talk to us and tell us how you're feeling and if anything bad was happening, okay? You promised you would tell us. Yeah. So can I ask you something? Are you mad at Mom or something? You've been kind of huffy with her all night long. You know, Augie, I'm as much to blame for sending you to school as she is. No, she's more to blame because it was her idea. Uh-oh, I think we just figured out why Augie's mad at Mom, why he's holding a grudge against Mom. Mom knocked on the door just then and peeked her head inside my room. Just wanted to say goodnight, she said. She looked kind of shy for a second. Hi, Mama, Dad said, picking up my hand and waving at her. I heard you cut off your braid, Mom said to me, sitting down at the edge of the bed next to Daisy. It's not a big deal, I answered quickly. It's not a big deal? I didn't say it was, said Mom. Why don't you put Augie to bed tonight, Dad said to Mom, getting up. I've got some work to do anyway. Good night, my son, my son. Now, that was another part of our Augie Doggie routine. Though I wasn't in the mood to say goodnight, dear old dad, 
I'm so proud of you, said Dad, and then he got up out of the bed. Now, Mom and Dad had always taken turns putting me to bed. I know it was a little babyish of me to still need them to do that, but that's just how it was with us. Let me let you in on a little secret. My daughter is 11, and I still put her to bed. I bet some of your parents do, too. Where's the harm in that? We still love you. We still want to tuck you in. We still want to tell you all the good nights and give you lovings and all that good mushy stuff. Will you check in on Via? Mom said to Dad as she lay down next to me. He stopped by the door and turned around. What's wrong with Via? Nothing, said Mom, shrugging. At least that she would tell me. But first day of high school and all that? Hmm, said Dad. And then he pointed his finger at me and winked. It's always something with you kids, isn't it? He said. Never a dull moment, said Mom. Amen to that. Because, Lord, these kids, you all know it. There's always some kind of drama or something going on. Never a dull moment, Dad repeated. Good night, guys. Now, as soon as he closed the door, Mom pulled out the books she'd been reading to me for the last couple of weeks. I was relieved because I really was afraid she wanted to talk, and I just didn't feel like doing that. But Mom didn't seem to want to talk either. She just flipped through the pages until she got to where we had left off. We were half about halfway through The Hobbit. Hmm, I've never read that book. Maybe it's something we want to check into. Stop, stop, shouted Thorin said Mom, reading aloud. But it was too late. The excitement dwarfs had wasted their last arrows, and now the bows that Bar Baron had given them were useless. They were a gloomy party that night, and the gloom gathered still deeper on them in the following days. They had crossed the enchanted stream, but beyond it the path seemed to straggle on just as before, and in the forest they could see no change. Now, I'm not sure why, but all of a sudden, I just started to cry. What's wrong with Augie? Now, Mom put the book down, and she wrapped her arms around me. She didn't seem surprised that I was crying. It's okay, she whispered in my ear. It'll be okay. I'm sorry, I said between sniffles. Shh, she said, wiping my tears with the back of her hand. You have nothing to be sorry about. Why do I have to be so ugly, Mommy? I whispered. No, baby, you're not. I know I am. Now she kissed me all over my face. She kissed my eyes that came down too far, and she kissed my cheeks that looked punched in, and she kissed my tortoise mouth. She said soft words that I know were meant to help me, but words can't change my face. So what is it that Augie's really upset about? Is he upset that his mom made him go to school? Maybe. Is he upset by the way he looks? Do you think he wants to just be normal and look like everyone else? Yeah, I think Augie's got a lot of feelings going on that's really hard for him to, to keep under control right now because this is all new for him, going to school and experiencing new people and, and all that. Now we're gonna go on to the next chapter is called Wake Me Up When September Ends, page 61. Now the rest of September was hard. I wasn't used to getting up so early in the morning. I wasn't used to this whole notion of homework. And I got my first quiz at the end of the month. I never got quizzes when mom homeschooled me. I also didn't like how I had no free time anymore. Before, I was able to play whenever I wanted to, but now it felt like I always had stuff to do for school. And being at school was awful in the beginning. Every new class I had was like a new chance for kids to not stare. But you know what that means. They were really staring, but trying not to be noticed. They would sneak peeks at me from behind their notebooks or when they thought I wasn't looking. They would take the longest way around me to avoid bumping into me in any way, like I had some germ that they could catch, like my face was contagious or something. In the hallways, which were always crowded, my face would always surprise some unsuspecting kid who maybe hadn't heard about me yet. 
The kid would make the sound you make when you hold your breath before going underwater, a little uh sound. Now this sound, this happened maybe four or five times a day for the first few weeks. On the stairs, in front of the lockers, in the library, 500 kids in a school. Eventually, every one of them was going to see my face at some time. And I knew after the first couple of days that word had gotten around about me because every once in a while I'd catch a kid elbowing his friend as they passed me by or talking behind their hands as I walked by them. I can only imagine what they were saying about me. Actually, I preferred to not even try to imagine it. Because sometimes we say some really mean things, some things that we don't even mean to hurt other people, or, or maybe we do, but we don't realize how hurtful they are. And sometimes it's just better if we don't even try to imagine what people say about us because it could be really hurtful. I'm not saying they were doing any of these things in a mean way, by the way. Not once did any kid laugh or make noises or do anything like that. They were just being normal, dumb kids. I know that. I kind of wanted to tell them that too. Like, it's okay. I know, I'm weird looking. Take a look, I don't bite. Hey, the truth is, if a Wookiee started going to school all of a sudden, well, I'd be curious too, and I'd probably stare a bit. Yeah, we all would. And if I was walking with Jack or Summer, I'd probably whisper to them, hey, look at that Wookiee. And if the Wookiee caught me saying that, he'd know I wasn't trying to be mean. I was just pointing out the fact that he's a Wookiee. Now, it took about one week for the kids in my class to get used to my face. These were the kids I'd see every day in all my classes. It took about two weeks for the rest of the kids in my grade to get used to my face. They were the kids I'd see in the cafeteria or yard time or PE, music, library, computer class. It took about a month for the rest of the kids in the entire school to get used to it. These were the kids in all the other grades. They were big kids, some of them. And some of them had crazy haircuts, some of them had earrings in their noses, and some of them had pimples. None of them looked like me. Now, we got through two chapters this evening. Remember, if you want to shout out or you want to talk to me or send me any messages or you've had any problem with the writing that we gave in the packets or the math or the reading, any of it, guys, drop us an email, send it on Dojo, Life Grades, any way. Drop us a line on Facebook, and my email is mlboyd at k12.wv.us. And guys, I'll respond and reply, and remember to tune in tomorrow for our Zoom conference where we're going to try to get all of you all on with all of us. And don't forget to pick up your lunches tomorrow at your bus stop or at the school, and I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.